the next few minutes, you will hear the whys and wherefores of making storm windows at a tenth of the commercial cost. Storm windows save you money by cutting down on heat loss through windows. Listen carefully as this tape will self-destruct at the end of the presentation. Look through the information in the folder. It is designed to make the construction of storm windows a mission possible. The results of your work should produce a product like this. Remember, storm windows work because they set up a dead air space between the window and storm window. It's the air, not the window, that does the insulating. The tools you'll need to accomplish this mission are the following. A saw and miter box. Tape measure. Staple gun. Hammer. Utility knife. And the materials with which to make the storm windows are as follows. One inch by two inch strips of wood for the frame. Molding. Plastic. This is eight mils thick. Staples, scotch fasteners, and finishing nails. And foam-backed weather stripping. With materials and tools in hand, the rest is up to you, should you decide to accept this mission. This tape will self-destruct in five minutes. Measuring the windows is the first step, and it's probably the most important. The idea is to make a frame about one-eighth inch smaller than the window all the way around. Measure all four sides individually because window frames tend to become unaligned over the years. Write each measurement down as you take it. Measure the left, then the right, and subtract one-eighth inch from each. Measure the top and the bottom and subtract one-eighth inch. If there is some variation, like the top is wider than the bottom by an inch or so, make the window to fit the small measurement and fill in the difference with weather stripping later. Cut the left and right pieces to the adjusted length. Make straight cuts, not mitered. Measure the width of the material you are using for the frame. Label each piece as it is cut. Cut the top and bottom pieces the adjusted length minus the width of the left and right pieces. Lay them out on a flat surface so the outside of the frame is facing you. The next step is to construct the frame with the scotch fasteners. Pound in a fastener on each corner, then turn the frame over and pound in four more fasteners. That's all there is to the frame. Put it up in the window and make sure it fits before you go any further. If you're going to paint or stain the frame and molding, do it now and let it dry. The plastic should be cut about two inches wider than the frame all around. Staple it to the frame this way. First the corners, then the sides. Stretch it smooth, but not too tight. The plastic will constrict in cold weather. You'll have the best luck if you work with the plastic when it is about 60 degrees in the room because it stretches and constricts when it gets hotter or colder. If you have wrinkles or folds in the plastic, try heating it up with a hairdryer, then letting it cool down. If you don't want to put molding on the window, just fold the plastic over the frame like this and staple. Finish it with weather stripping and you're done. The molding does make it look better, it usually goes about one quarter inch from the inner edge of the frame. You probably should miter the corners for looks. Use the finishing nails to put it on, then trim off the extra vinyl like this. Put foam weather stripping on the storm window to make a tight seal. Either here or here. And you are done. Mission accomplished. The cost of these windows is about a dollar per square foot. The windows last anywhere from three to ten years, 
depending on exposure to the elements and wear and tear. All the directions are in this brochure, making your own storm windows. Call City Light at 625-3020 to get a copy.